Hello, thanks for checking out 3D Brush. In this video I'm going to show you a quick overview of how 3D Brush works and I'll cover the other details in other videos. As you can see here we have our main window with our main menu and on the second page we have our brushes with the prefabs already loaded and we can select the prefabs and it'll show us the settings for each prefab and just quickly uh, we have the selected brush, the, the name of the brush, the speed, the minimum and maximum slider values for this one here. We also have a percentage value which determines the probability of this one being picked. Um, the scale value which is a random it'll pick a random scale between these two values. We can also make the prefabs static. We can lock the orientation which means that uh, this prefab will not follow the uh, surface normal of the terrain. We can align to stroke which is useful for uh, rocks and bricks. Um, we can also choose the layer that we want this prefab to go into when it's painted. We can include it into the terrain or the default. We can also set position offsets. This allows us to uh, correct any prefabs that might have been imported uh, incorrectly. We can rotate them and position them. Sometimes they're a little bit high and we can actually set that uh, higher or lower. Rotation offsets. Um, we can lock the rotation by turning everything off or we can get a randomized rotation or scale by setting these. And we can also set a spread difference, uh, spread distance. What this does is it allows us to uh, place objects uh, further apart from each other or closer together, or we can turn it off altogether. And back in our scene here, to delete, uh, we just hold down the shift key. We can quickly delete all the existing prefabs. And to paint, we hold down control. And we can quickly populate our scene with prefabs based on the brush settings. We can also undo with control Z or redo with control Y. Also have over the side we can paint to uh, the layer we select here. We can also uh, paint a selection, which means that if we import a, uh, a cube here, um, we'll just scale it up. It will only paint to that selected object. Fill mode allows us to uh, hold down the mouse, ki mouse button and it'll paint a lot faster and it'll keep painting. But it won't paint, it won't overpaint in a certain area due to the spread distance of the prefabs. So if I hold the mouse button down, eventually it'll reach a maximum and you won't get overdraw. With the shapes here, I'll just quickly uh, delete this lot here. What the shapes allow us to do is to quickly create a custom shape. And we can also change the point types to make, make them curved, or you can have them angular. And when we turn the shape on, you'll notice in the scene it's been added. And wherever we double click, it'll move the shape to that point. We can also scale the shapes. And when a shape is selected, when we paint, it will only paint to that shape. And if I add a new shape here, out of the list, uh, like a rectangle, 
and turn it on. You'll see the rectangle has been added. We'll just scale it up as well. And what we'll do with the rectangle is we'll make it exclusive by turning that off. And now it will only paint inside one shape and it'll exclude the other shape. And also turn that one off. We'll make this inclusive again. And we can reuse that pattern repeatedly. Another feature is um, the steepness value over here. And this angle here is the maximum steepness that we want to paint on. And it's useful for faces like this where you've got a bit of a cliff face and you don't want to paint on the surface here, but you want to paint everywhere else. And down here we can also override the brush defaults uh, such as scale, um, and it'll set a specific scale for all the prefabs, distance between the prefabs, as well as the multipliers, which will increase or decrease the scale of the overall brush, as well as the distances between the prefabs of the brush. Uh, we can also, down here, batch combine, so it'll take every prefab in a, in a group that's static and it'll combine them together to save some draw calls. Many new features, especially with the uh, taper, which I haven't shown yet. Uh, if we turn on the rectangle here and we set uh, a value, a distance for the taper, we'll turn it on. And back here we'll also uh, select this brush by itself, uh, sorry, this prefab. And so I'm going to deselect all the others. I'm going to select that one and turn it on. And now with taper uh, set, what will happen is that the brush will taper to the edges of the shape. This is very exper experimental at the moment, but uh, I plan to add many new features. And uh, in further videos, I'll uh, cover more of the points, the settings for the uh, prefabs, and uh, I thank you for watching. Bye for now.